Hi sisters, my name is James and I'm Ian and welcome to the first ever episode of the James and Ian show. All you sisters out there know that me and Ian have posted several videos together on my YouTube channel and as much as he acts like he's hated them, we have been having a lot of fun doing them together. I'm bored of school and I decided I want to be social media famous too. <laughs> so we decided that we're going to make a video every Sunday discussing various topics. Today we'll be talking about relationships. <laughs> If you were able to build the perfect boy, what would it look like? It. Yeah, it. He. For personality, there's one BuzzFeed producer that I'm like hardcore crushing on right now named Eric. So his personality. Shout out you, Eric. Yeah, shout out Eric. Um, I would take like one of the Dolan's bodies, slap on like Cameron Dallas's face, and then like the talent of Shawn Mendes. Build your perfect it woman. All right, we would do Jen Settler's body. Okay. Kylie Jenner's face. Uh huh. And one of the plugs personality. Oh, that'd be a good and fresh sister. I feel like relationships for me are a very like weird topic to discuss being that like you have to find someone that you like want to hang out with and be your best friend, but also like... It's because you only get... try and talk to straight boys. Well, you got me there. When it comes to relationship, like opposites are supposed to attract, right? And I'm very gay. So like if I'm in a relationship with somebody, I need someone to like balance me out, right? So that's why I always go for like very masculine, muscular type men. And normally those are like the straights. It's also a fun challenge. Like if you know me, you know that I definitely love a good competition. And for me, getting with a straight guy is like winning. And a sister loves winning. Since I'm good at relationships and James is convinced he's good at relationships. Excuse me, I am. We decided to ask you guys if you had any love problems and we're gonna give you some really good relationship advice. Yeah. Sister Jack said, my ex-boyfriend cheated on me two times and wants to get back together. Okay. Well, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I want Go for the third time. Definitely not. Manager Dolan responded with, I broke up with my ex because he was being very controlling. My supposedly friend is now with him, LOL. Okay, all relationship problems aside, that is not a true friend right there. You need to cut her out of your life before you get him out of your life. Cut them both off while we're at it, gal. Jenna asked, my crush will not notice that I like him and I'm so obvious about it. What do I do? Well, Jenna, I would just be honest with him and tell him that you like him because honesty is key in a relationship. Demily asked, no man likes me. How do you help with that? I'll let you know when I find out, gal. Sister Alfonso asked, I'm gay and I like a guy, but I don't know his sexuality. What should I do? Literally, welcome to my world. This sounds like I asked the question. As someone who has dealt with this many, many times in the past, crushing on straight boys or boys that like you do not know what the T is, it's sometimes important to ask, but not in an offensive way because sexuality is obviously something that is very, very private and is nobody's business but their own unless they decide to share it. So usually I feel like it eventually comes out in a conversation, but I definitely do have one crazy story that I think I wanna share with you guys today. Okay, I'm gonna like paint the picture for you so you can like really relive the story with me. So like there is one social media boy that I will not name for security purposes from the South. Like Florida you're talking about? No, like the South. I messaged this person on Snapchat because he had posted like a gym flexing picture and I was like, oh wow. Oh, nice. Yeah. And he actually ended up replying and he said, oh my God, James Charles, like, I can't believe you just Snapchatted me. My girlfriend loves your videos. We watch them together all the time. And I was like, oh, thanks so much, sister. I had had makeup on because I had just finished filming. And a few minutes into the conversation, he sent back a snap that was like, wow, you're the most beautiful boy in the entire world. And I was like, oh, nice. What? And I like thought he was kidding. Like I talk to a lot of straight guys still that like I'm not flirty with, that I'm like genuinely friends with, but they're always like playing that game just to like really get me going gal. And it's annoying, but like I'm used to it at this point. So I thought he was kidding around. We kept talking and this boy is close to my age and he was like, you're just so successful. Like at our age, like how do you do that? And I was like, well, I work hard. He was telling me how he really wants to move to LA and be an underwear model. So I was like, okay, like oh. interesting. So does every other little white boy from the South. So I was like, well, if you want to be a model, let's see what you got. At this point, I was thinking he was still messing with me, but he started sending a bunch of photos in his underwear. Oh. And me being the absolute supermodel that I am. Okay, that works, yeah. I didn't ask for your input. I started critiquing his photos. So I was like, oh, your butt looks really bad in this one. Like, your face looks really bad in this one. Like, get it together, gal. If you want to be an underwear model, you got to step your game up. Somehow the conversation shifted to like his body and how he wanted to look better. And then like to relationships and asking if I've ever been in a relationship. And then I told him, no, what are you doing? Ignore that. And then him asking about my hookups, which I've also all ended very, very poorly. To them, him saying, oh, I feel like you'd give a very good 
if you know where I'm going with that. <laughs> so I was like, yes, I do, <laughs> but why are you asking? And he's like, oh, I would totally let you at that point, the realization that he was in fact not kidding and was being dead serious hit me like a bus going a million miles per hour. I thought this kid had a girlfriend. Well, he does. That's where the story gets interesting. That's messed up. Yeah. So he started getting intense artistry and started sending more photos that weren't exactly appropriate if you get what I'm putting on the table here. He was saying all this stuff and flirting with me. And he told me how he like wants to fly to California and like take me on a date and then like do stuff at the end of the night. And to this, I was like, as hot as you are and as much as I am enjoying this conversation, I am not doing anything with you if you have a girlfriend. And you know what he said to me? I don't. He literally said, and I quote, she's a huge fan of you. And if I told her, she would not even care. Oh, so she's a sister. Yeah, apparently a real, true, hardcore sister. I need to take a sip of my pink drink. Is it gonna get intense? This is getting intense. After hearing this, obviously I was like very, very shook, but I assumed because he said that his girlfriend wouldn't care and like knows that he's apparently not straight, that they were in some type of like open relationship type of situation. So after hearing that, I was in it to win it. This all happened at like two in the morning as well. So I'm sure you can imagine like what was going on in the brain at this point. And things started getting really, really flirty, really fast and also very, very out of hand. And out of pants apparently. Yeah, if a photo was not enough, there's obviously a lot of details to the story that I do not need to get into. But I will say that this very long and late night ended with him FaceTiming me and doing his business. You gotta be kidding. I... Please tell me you're joking. I'm not kidding. After that night, fast forward, and he completely ghosted me for two months straight. His girlfriend probably found out. We're getting there. So I sent him a really, really long message that basically said, if you do not want to talk anymore, I understand why. And I do not blame you. I don't want to come in between your relationship and I do respect that. But I respect you as a person as well. And I genuinely had a really good time talking to him. He was super sweet the night we talked. Sexuality is something that is obviously really, really hard to deal with. And clearly a sister was confused. So I basically said, if you ever need someone to talk to you about it, that you know you can trust and like that will give you good advice as someone who's been there before, I got you. And to that message, he literally sent back the rudest reply. That man's salty. Okay, yeah. Very, very salty. What really got me good though, and is the kicker of this entire story, is that it was his birthday a few days ago. Happy birthday, man. No, not happy birthday. And he came up on my Explore page on Instagram because I never actually followed him in the first place, but I saw a picture of him and his girlfriend still happily together, and I noticed that he had unfollowed me on Instagram. And I was like, oh, this is rude. But I had sent him a happy birthday text, which is my second message to him over the entire process of the thing. He ignored it, did not reply. And at that point, I was like, oh, it is game over, you played with the wrong gal. But all pettiness aside, the situation has obviously been like on my mind for the past several months because I caught feelings for him fast. It's very clear. Yeah. And I also felt really, really bad for the girlfriend after all this went down because clearly something was going on and I thought she knew at this point. So I sent a sister a message on Instagram asking her to FaceTime me ASAP because it was digging at me and I really just wanted to tell her the truth tea. Basically, I told the girlfriend the full story from start to finish in full detail, which was so incredibly hard for me. Not only was I like super incredibly embarrassed of what I had obviously done, being that I had no idea that she did not know what was going on, Clearly he lied. Yeah, but you didn't do anything, it was just him, so. But it definitely was his fault, yeah, 100%. But also just seeing her being so happy in what she thought was a genuine relationship, literally coming crashing down, like over a FaceTime call was just way too much to handle. Obviously she was very, very alarmed and overwhelmed. I mean, like who wouldn't be? And I told her that if she had any questions or needed to talk to me throughout that day, that she could totally come to me, I would be there for her. And she told me that she was going to see him later on so she would confront him about it. Not even 30 minutes later, I started getting the most gross, disgusting text messages from the boy who I have not talked to, but I've tried to reach out to several times in the last two months I've ever seen in my entire life. They contained racist slurs, homophobic slurs, just literally like everything you could possibly imagine. He literally started calling me psycho and mentally unstable, claiming that I made everything up. Yeah, I'm sure you imagine him saying he's gonna shove his nine inch <laughs> down your throat. <laughs> right? Just wondering, what was your thought process thinking you'd make all this up when you have a life? I literally do not know. That was my thing too. Like, why would I literally call somebody at 10 in the morning while I was doing my makeup in the middle of like going to a photo shoot just to say like, hi, I'm a complete awful person and I got photos from your boyfriend who you're in a happy relationship with and I'm now calling you to admit that because I care about you and don't think you like deserve that. But apparently I'm lying. 
Like, hello. I did not tell the story today to try to like expose the two people. I'm definitely not about that. But I think that this does have a really good message behind it that a lot of people tend to forget when they're in relationships. Sexuality is obviously a very, very hard and uncomfortable topic for a lot of people to deal with. I'm very lucky to have an amazing support system in my family. But for people like this boy that I'm talking about, it sometimes becomes a situation where you're in the closet or you're in denial. And even though we had a really great time on FaceTime that one night doing all that stuff, he turned his confusion into literal targeted homophobia towards me in exchange for helping him, which not only put me in a really horrible situation, his beautiful girlfriend who I spoke to and that I can tell is a really, really genuine and kind person is in an absolutely toxic relationship that she has absolutely no idea about and is clearly delusional over. And the boy is gonna have to live with this in the back of his mind for the rest of his life that not only did he cheat on his girlfriend, but he also like might really be, messed with me. Yeah. After hearing that, I would also like to add that although relationships might seem perfect, you have to put your own well-being first because clearly she didn't and yeah. didn't turn out too well. It's definitely very important to listen to the people around you who care about you and love you because they usually have your best intention in their mind. Absolutely. I feel like that story literally just took me 76 years to tell, but Ian, do you have any crazy girl stories? I mean, my DMs are quite interesting, but that's for a later video. Oh. All right, guys, that is all we have for our first ever episode of The James and Ian Show, but there are so many more episodes to come and we had so much fun filming today and we really hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you guys did enjoy this video, give it a huge thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that big red subscribe button for new videos every Sunday. I normally post makeup videos on Tuesdays and Fridays, so if you'd like to follow me on my makeup journey, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. They're both just James Charles. And my Snapchat for more behind the scenes side stuff is James Charles, the next S after Charles. If you'd like to follow Sister Ian. Brother Ian. Just tell them your social media. <laughs> My social medias are enjd12. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. We love you and we'll see you next week. Bye!